Stories and content in Weird Darkness can be disturbing for some listeners and is intended for mature audiences only. Parental discretion is strongly advised. The Black Museum. Affiliated stations present Escape. All of fantasy. In a sanctum mystery. Welcome, Weirdos! I'm Darren Marlar, and this is Retro Radio Sunday on Weird Darkness. Each week, I bring you a show from the golden age of radio but still in the genre of Weird Darkness. I'll have stories of the macabre and horror, mysteries and crime, and even some dark science fiction. If you're new here, welcome to the show. And if you're already a member of this Weirdo family, please take a moment and invite someone else to listen in with you. And please, leave a rating and review in the podcast app you're listening from. Doing these things helps the show to keep growing. And while you're listening, be sure to check out WeirdDarkness.com for merchandise, my newsletter, to connect with me on social media, and more. Coming up, it's an episode from Screen Directors Playhouse. The show brought leading Hollywood actors to the NBC microphones beginning in 1949 and recreated radio versions of films that the actors were famous for starring in with the original directors of the films also sometimes involved in the radio productions, although their participation was usually limited to introducing the radio adaptations and taking a brief curtain call with the cast and host at the end of the program. The show had both a radio and television version. The radio version, which ran for 122 episodes, went through numerous name changes. When it launched January 9, 1949, it was named Screen Directors Guild Assignment then just Screen Director's Assignment, then it was changed to NBC Theater, and then it finally landed upon Screen Director's Playhouse before the radio show ended September 28, 1952. Tonight it's an episode from November 25, 1949, The Spiral Staircase with Dorothy McGuire, who also starred in the film version in 1946, from which this radio adaptation is based. In a small village, the mute Helen attends a silent film screening in the parlor of a local inn. During the screening, a woman staying at the inn is murdered in her room, the latest in a string of killings in the community. And that's just how the story begins. Now, bolt your doors, lock your windows, turn off your lights, and come with me into the weird darkness. Screen Director's Playhouse Star Dorothy McGuire Production Spiral Staircase Director Robert Ziotmack The Hollywood Screen Directors present a play on silent words. The motion picture drama, Spiral Staircase, starring Dorothy McGuire in her original role of Helen. Sunday school is all right, but I wish they'd treat us like women. My golly. Mm, they make us skip the book of Ruth and the Song of Songs, which is Solomon. Especially that. My golly, it's in the Bible. Oh, it's beautiful. My beloved spoke and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away. For lo, the winter is past, the rain is over and gone. What's wrong with that, I'd like to know? Oh, it's beautiful. And St. Elmo. What's wrong reading St. Elmo? Now, if you ask me, I think that the... My golly, a fire on Sunday? Yes. Let's follow it, Helen. Run! It's I'm no use. Oh, 
Hush, child. Don't cry out. Don't speak. There's no need to speak now. It's all over, my daughter. So hush. 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 From that day on, I was never able to speak again. Whenever I tried, I'd hear my mother's voice again. My mother who had died in the fire, saying, Hush, child. Hush. I could make people understand me with simple signs, a nod, a shake of my head, pad and pencil. Later, I left my hometown to take domestic work with the Warren family, Professor Albert Warren, his half-brother Stephen, and his stepmother, Mrs. Warren. It was all I wanted. Then, one Friday evening, I was coming home from the village where I'd gone to see that newfangled amusement motion pictures. It was a bleak November dusk, and there'd been some mysterious excitement in town. Something quite terrible. I didn't know what. Helen? Oh. Helen, is that you in the road? Oh, it's Dr. Perry. It's the young doctor who likes me, I think. Helen? Oh, oh, it is you. Nod and smile, Helen. As though you could speak, but choose to nod and smile as ladies do, by choice. Yeah, it's good to see you smile. Well, hop in, and I'll drive you right onto the Warren's gatehouse. Here, here's a hand. Yep, you go. Yep. There. Yep, Galen. Well, I've missed you, Helen. How have you been, Helen? Smile and nod. Good. Good. Oh, he's missed me, he says. It uh, wasn't a very nice thing happened in town on your day off. Oh? What was it, I wonder? Young woman, a rather pretty young cripple, was murdered. Did you know that? Another one. And I, I'm telling you because I want you to be very careful about going out after nightfall. That's all. Oh, he's kind. Could he really like me? Now, now tell me. How much longer are you going to stay on at the Warrens? I know what he means. You know, you've got to make an effort to get back your voice, Helen. Oh, he mustn't. Oh, I know. Much rather I wouldn't talk about I it. I would rather. Not that there isn't a certain beauty and grace in your stillness. You're not mute. You're still. But somehow, eloquent. Oh, I love him so. And everything you think is in your eyes, Helen. Good night, Helen. Be careful. Only a few more yards to the house. Rattle a stick on the picket fence. My kind of whistling in the dark. Crippled girl murdered. Why? Who? Faster. Faster. Run. Oh, oh it's you, Helen. <sighs> Professor Warren. He looks worried or angry. I'm glad you're here, Helen. I wonder if you'll go up to see my stepmother. She's feeling worse again. Thank you, Anna. Thank you. Where have you been, Helen? It's late. She never remembers my night out. Oh, put that eternal pencil and pad away. Never oh, mind. She's ill. She doesn't mean to hurt. I hoped you were never coming back tonight. Why? What can she mean? Helen, run away. If you know what's good for you, run away. What's she saying? Leave this house tonight. Helen, mother. Oh, don't call me mother, Albert. The most shocking thing has happened in town. There's been another murder. Why, how would you know? Yes, how? How do you know, Albert? Well, the constable was just here. Very curious. I'm mentioning this in Helen's presence for good reasons. Every one of those murdered girls had some kind of affliction. Affliction? Yes, the servant girl had a bad scar. Second one was wrong in the head. This one limped. Albert, 
Where is Stephen? Stephen? I... Has Stephen come in yet? Why? Answer me. No. Why? Because he... There's the rain. He'll be drenched. That's why. I want Helen to be especially careful for the next few days. He's good, too. Kind and thoughtful and good. Helen, if you see anything at all outside this house that makes you suspicious, I want you to tell me. Yes, not yes. Thank you. I have some dictation to give Blanche on my book. Remember what I told you, Helen. And don't trust anyone. Helen, pack your things and leave. Leave? No. Why? Where? Oh, no. Shake your head off if you like, but leave tomorrow. Meanwhile, there's a gun in my dresser. No, I'm afraid oh, of guns. Oh, stop shaking your head at me, girl. Stop contradicting me. You're in danger here. Do you want... It's an attack. Uh, Dr. Perry. Get me, Dr. Perry. Hurry. <laughs> Stephen? Yes, Mother. I just got in. Drenched. His shoes coated with mud. Where's Dr. Perry? On the way, Mother. There's been another murder. Oh, has there? Oh, why didn't you stay in Paris? Don't you want me with you, Mother? Where were you tonight? If you must know... I must know, yes. She knows something. I, um... I was out walking with Blanche... No. Blanche, Professor Warren's secretary. They both like I her. think the professor will want to talk to you, Stephen. About the murder? Why, no, Stephen. About Blanche, his secretary. Very well, Mother. It's quiet now. We're waiting for Dr. Perry to arrive. Quiet now, but the professor and Stephen have had a dreadful quarrel about Blanche. She's very pretty and no afflictions, and so men quarrel over her. Stephen and the professor hate each other, and it's so terrible. Both, after all, had the same father. <gasps> Dr. Perry! You know, Dr. Perry... You look a little like my husband. Oh, really, Mrs. Warren? Yes. Was he kind to he her had husband? A sure step. Gentle and kind to girls man. with Good afflictions. Eyes. Well, I'm flattered. Thank you. He always told me I wasn't as beautiful as his first wife, but that I was a much better shot. Oh. She has a gun in this very room. <laughs> yes, the beauty my husband admired was the beauty of strength and of character. And both of his sons were weaklings. Stephen and the professor. I'm weak, too. Afflicted. Dr. Perry, I, I, you love Helen. Mrs. Oh. Warren. If you love her, and I know you do, get her out of this house. Now, now you're upsetting yourself again. Get her out of this house while there's still time. Do you hear me? Do you? Do you? Do you? Helen. <laughs> Helen, brandy, quickly. <laughs> Brandy, Brandy. I've looked everywhere. None. None in the pantry. None in the closet. I'll run into the study to find Professor Warren. Brandy, Brandy. Write it out, Helen, will you? Yes. B-R-A-N-D. Brandy. Yes, Brandy, yes. I'll have to fetch a bottle from the cellar. Get Mrs. Oates out of the kitchen. Tell her to come with me and bring a candle. Hurry, girl. Warren is resting again. Mrs. Oates is back in the kitchen in a stupor from the brandy she managed to steal when she went down into the wine cellar with Professor Warren. Blanche stays in her room. I wait in the parlor while Dr. Perry gives Professor Warren some instructions. Uh, Helen. Oh, Dr. Perry, looking so very tired. I, I want to talk to you. Oh, Helen. he mustn't apologize. Here, here. Sit next to me here. Oh, he mustn't try to explain that it was Mrs. Warren and not he who said he loves me. I understand. I've been thinking things over, Helen. Mrs. Warren is right. He says Mrs. Warren is right. You should come away with me tonight. Oh, he does you love can me. Stay at my mother's house until I take you to Boston to see a specialist. Oh, afflicted. Uh, uh Helen, the Fabers on Pepper Street have an out-of-town guest, Betty Lindstrom. Betty Lindstrom. She went to Sunday school with you years ago. Sunday school. 
Barry Lindstrom. She tells a story about a young girl walking home from Sunday school one day. No. When she wasn't no. far from home, she heard a fire engine rushing down the street. It was her own home, wrapped in flames, her mother and father trapped inside. She tried to scream. Scream, Helen. I can't. Scream. Can't. Try. I'm trying. Why? Trying. 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 Ah. Ah. Shh. Yes, Mother. Hush. Yes. Helen, you can speak. Speak. <laughs> Helen. Helen, I'm sorry. Oh, I, I was know. trying to help you. I know. He's so good. Oh, well, that must be for me, Helen. Oh. I left this number with the Wilsons. Their boy is very sick. Here, I'll write the Wilson telephone number on your notepad. 189. 189. Yes, and have Mrs. Oates call me there if you need me. Now, if you'll go to the door with me, I'll take it as a sign that, that you forgive me. Ah, oh, it's a wretched night. But the rain's over. Nod, yes. Smile, Helen, please. Smile. <laughs> That's better. Thank you. Thank me. Now, be sure and lock the door, won't you? And don't open it for anyone but me. But before he went... Good night, Helen. He kissed me. He kissed me. He wants me to come away with him. He kissed me. How was it long ago in the Bible, in the Song of Songs, which is Solomon's? My beloved spoke and said unto me, Rise up, my love, my fair one, and come away with me. For lo, the winter is past. It's a wretched night. But the rain's over. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear on the earth, and the time of singing is come. Arise, my love, and let me see thy countenance. He loves me. Let me see thy he countenance. He loves me. Let me hear thy voice. Voice. For sweet, sweet is thy voice, and thy countenance is comely. Voice. Let me hear voice. thy voice. Let me hear thy voice. Let me hear thy voice. Hush, daughter. Hush. You are listening to the Screen Director's Playhouse presentation of The Spiral Staircase, starring Dorothy McGuire in her original role of Helen, the mute girl, and John Daner as Dr. Perry. If you love old-time radio, you'll want to visit our friends at ClassicRadioStore.com who provide all the shows for me to wear. At ClassicRadioStore.com, you'll find thousands of episodes available in pristine, digitally remastered sound. Every episode they offer at ClassicRadioStore.com has been transferred from the master recordings and digitally remastered for superior sound quality. That's why the episodes that you hear on Weird Darkness sound so clean. And the shows at ClassicRadioStore.com are all uncut, unedited, and are delivered to you as they were originally broadcast, including the classic commercials. You can download great shows that'll chill you and thrill you, such as Suspense, The Whistler, Inner Sanctum, Lights Out, and more. There are mystery and crime shows like Sherlock Holmes, Philip Marlowe, Dragnet, and Sam Spade. 
They got a great collection of old-time science fiction radio shows like X-1 or Dimension X. Plus, there is a ton of comedy and westerns there, too, if you want to relive the shows of yesteryear. All the shows are available to instantly digitally download, and the links never expire, so you can order them now and listen to them anytime you'd like. And because you're a listener of Weird Darkness, you can save 20% on any and all radio shows on the website by using the promo code WEIRD at checkout. Just visit ClassicRadioStore.com, select all the radio show packages you want, then at checkout use the promo code WEIRD and save 20% on your whole purchase. That's ClassicRadioStore.com, promo code WEIRD at checkout. Dr. Perry has been gone almost an hour, and now a second bitter quarrel in the house, Stephen in Blanche's room next to mine, raising their voices, Stephen, Blanche they, crying, Stephen taunting her, laughing at her. my room, especially the professor. Crying, my dear Blanche, <gasps> makes no impression on me whatever. I like to see women cry. It makes me feel so superior. I'm not going on with you anymore, Stephen. We can't hide our feelings from the professor any longer. And just why should we hide our feelings from my stepbrother? Oh, I forget you did have a certain interest in him. You are a pig. How, Blanche? Get out. I'm leaving tonight. The better to wash my hands of you. As you wish, Blanche. But you'll regret this. I honestly think you're going to regret this most seriously. Blanche has left her room and gone down to get her suitcases out of the cellar. I'd be afraid to go down there alone. It's very dark in the cellar. There's a spiral staircase that goes round and round into the dust and the damp and the darkness, round and round into darkness. Oh, I'm sorry if I disturbed you, Helen. Do you know where Blanche is? Blanche. Isn't she up from the cellar yet? Helen, I'm speaking to you. Will you please find Blanche? I want her to take some dictation in my study. At once. The spiral staircase. Going round and round. Down into darkness. Into the dark. The damp. The shadows. Blanche. Where's Blanche? It's been almost an hour. Who could have... Stephen. Dead? Nod, yes, yes, nod, yes, 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 All dead, right. yes. All right. You've got to let me handle this, Helen. Do you understand what I mean? I could dash for the door. Helen, answer me. Do you understand what I say? Dash for the door. Open it. Slam it. Bolt it outside. Helen! Terrified. Pencil, lost pencil, pencil. Are you trying to... Pencil? Here, right. Right, yes, right. Blanche? Yes, M-U-R-D-E-R. Helen, in heaven's name, are you... Do you know who did it? S-T-E-P-H-E. Stephen? Yes. Of course. Why does he say of course? Helen, where is Stephen now? Locked in cellar. Oh. Helen. Why does he look at me like that? Helen, look there in the mirror. Mirror? Go on, look at yourself, Helen. Why does he do this? You see, Helen, you have no mouth. No mouth? I know what he means, but why should he say it so cruelly? No mouth, Helen. And in all this world, there's no room for imperfection. He's so strange. We're alone, Helen. 
Mrs. Oates is very drunk because I purposely let her steal a bottle of brandy when we went downstairs before. My stepmother is helpless in her bed. And you have just locked Stephen in the cellar. Blanche is dead. He... He is the killer. Blanche, whom I loved and who betrayed me with Stephen, is dead. Where I killed her. He's mad. What a pity father didn't live to see me become strong, to see me dispose of the weak and the imperfect in this world. Escape. I put on these leather gloves. Where? Father would admire me for what I'm about to do. I know. The gun. The gun in Mrs. Warren's room. Escape. I'm not so imperfect as he thinks. I run, run like the wind. Climb the stairs to Mrs. Warren's room like a cat. Slam the door and bolt it in his face. Gun. Cat and pencil. Right. Gun. Wake up, Mrs. Warren. Wake up. Wake up. Oh, please, wake up. Her eyes are opening. Now, read. Gun. The gun. Where is the gun? Gun? What gun? Helen! She knows where the gun is. She must know. Helen! Oh, it's no use. It's no use. She's drugged or poisoned. Someone at the door downstairs. Someone's outside. The professor will have to answer. And then I can steal downstairs again, down the spiral staircase. Free Stephen. Get Stephen to help me. Yes! <laughs> Round and down. Down and round. Into the darkness. Into the shadows. Softly. 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 I saw a shoe draw back into the shadows under the last spiral. The professor, waiting. Turn. Softly. Go back. Softly. Step. 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 And run! Helen, I want to help you! God, Mrs. Warren, at the top of the steps. Stop where you are. Mrs. Warren. Both of you. She has the gun. Why does she point it at both of us? Mother. No, only your stepmother, whom your father always taught never to waste a single shot. You murderer. It was you who killed all those girls. I thought it was Stephen. You always waited until Stephen came home to cast suspicion on him. Never waste a shot. Your father taught me. Never a shot. (laughs) Helen, girl. Better get me Dr. Perry. Number, please. Number, please. Hush, daughter. Hush. Number, please. You see, Helen, you have no mouth. You must leave this house, Helen. Let me see thy countenance. Let me hear thy voice. Number, please. You have no mouth. Let me hear thy voice. Number, please. Thy voice. No mouth. Thy voice. No mouth. Thy voice. No mouth. Thy voice. No mouth. mouth. Number, please. Number, please. One. Eight. Nine. Thank you. Hello? Hello? Dr. Perry? This is Dr. Perry. Who is this? It's me. Who? Helen. Helen? Helen, darling, what's happened? What? Wait, let me run over. Darling. He said, darling. A 
beloved spoke and said unto me, Arise, my love, my fair one, and come away with me. Arise, and let me hear thy voice. Dorothy McGuire will return in just a moment. Next week, as always, another great star repeats a brilliant performance on Screen Director's Playhouse. Our story is All My Sons, and recreating his original role will be Edward G. Robinson with Screen Director Irving Reese. Now, here again is tonight's star, Dorothy McGuire. Thank you so much. The part of the mute girl in the picture spiral staircase was a pretty frightening assignment until I found out my director was to be Robert Siadmak. Robert is a kind of super-talented elf who directs his pictures with a magnificent mixture of skill and gaiety. As a result, he says he has only one regret about Spiral Staircase. Uh, the studio wouldn't let him slide down the banister. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen, I'd like you to meet Robert Siadmak. Thank you, Dorothy. But I was listening to Spiral Staircase tonight. I must make a confession. About what, Robert? Well, I thought it would be impossible to do a radio drama in which the central character was a girl without a voice. But it was done beautifully. Well, thank you. My part was a little larger than the three or four lines I had in the picture. Mm hmm This picture business. <laughs> you know, before Spiral Staircase, the producer said to me, Robert, what do you think of Dorothy McGuire? She's wonderful, I told him. She has the most magnificent voice. And he said, that's fine. We put her in a picture with nothing to say. <laughs> well, you know how producers <laughs> behave sometimes. And Robert, I loved every minute of it. Well, next time they ask me about Dorothy McGuire, I won't mention your voice. I say she's so beautiful and a great dramatic actress. Well, then they probably tell me to direct you in The Invisible Woman. <laughs> Just so you don't play the part of an invisible director, Robert... And seeing you behind those cameras again is something I'm looking forward to. Well, I know I'm a beauty. Thank you, Dorothy. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Good night. Good, Good night. night, everyone. Good night. And good night to you, Dorothy McGuire and Robert C. Odlack. Remember next week, Edward G. Robinson and Irving Reese with Jeff Chandler. Spiral Staircase was presented through the courtesy of RKO Radio Pictures, producers of that hilarious comedy, Bride for Sale, starring Claudette Colbert, Robert Young, and George Brent. Dorothy McGuire will soon be seen as the star of the 20th Century Fox production, O oh Doctor. Robert C. Max's latest production for Universal International Pictures is Deported, starring Marta Torrin and Jeff Chandler. Included in tonight's cast were John Daner, Stephen Dunn, Georgia Backus, David Ellis, Jane Webb, Betty Moran, Jane Morgan, and Dan Riss. Spiral Staircase, based on a novel by Ethelina White, was adapted for radio by Milton Geiger, and original music was composed and conducted by Henry Russell. Screen Director's Playhouse is produced by Howard Wiley with dramatic direction by Bill Karn. This is Jimmy Wallington speaking and inviting you to listen again next week when we present... Screen Director's Playhouse, star Edward G. Robinson, production All My Sons, director Irving Reese. What's on NBC Sunday? Sunday on Hollywood Calling. You may be called by motion picture stars June Haver and Richard Widmark to win a wonderful prize and crack the film of fortune jackpot. Make a note to stick close to your radio and your telephone Sunday for Hollywood Calling. It might be your lucky day. So listen to Hollywood Calling Sunday on NBC. Stay tuned for Bill Stern on the Sports Newsreel on NBC. Thanks for listening to this week's retro radio episode of Weird Darkness. If you like the show, please share it with someone you know who loves old-time radio and leave a rating and review in the podcast app you listen from to help spread the word about Weird Darkness and Retro Radio Sunday. And a huge thanks to our friends at ClassicRadioStore.com for generously providing the old-time radio shows you hear on Weird Darkness Retro Radio Sunday. Remember, you can save 20% on all of the ClassicRadioStore.com shows 
by using the promo code WEIRD at checkout. The rest of the week, I narrate new stories of the paranormal or strange stories, true crime, monsters, and mysteries, so be sure to subscribe to the podcast if you haven't already done so. I upload episodes seven days a week. You can email me anytime and find all of my social media links on the contact page at WeirdDarkness.com. Also on the website, you can listen to free audiobooks that I've narrated, shop the Weird Darkness store, sign up for the newsletter to win monthly prizes, and more. Weird Darkness is a production and trademark of Marlar House Productions. Copyright Weird Darkness. I'm Darren Marlar. Thanks for joining me in the Weird Darkness.